Hey there YouTube, Arbana69 here. Today I've got a quick video on 3D printing for you, as you might have guessed. Now, no, this is not a video dedicated to the Ender 3 or specific to the Ender 3. It's more to do with the filament that I've been running through it. Now, this is Eri1 Glow-in-the-Dark Green PLA filament. I've been wanting to try this filament for quite some time now, um, although I have read on the internet that this was quite abrasive and that did put me off. But I decided to bite the bullet, get a reel of it and see how abrasive it actually is and actually what it does to a brass nozzle. Now the recommendations that I've seen is that you run this through a hardened steel nozzle, but I wanted to see what happened to a brass nozzle after a few prints. Now the reason I believe that this filament is classed as abrasive is inside the filament itself is a strontium aluminate um, flex powder, whatever it is, um, that's actually bonded into the PLA filament and that's what gives it its glow in the dark properties. Now, I've not printed a great deal with the filament. Um, there is still a lot of filament left on the reel. Um, if we can see on the back of the reel there, you can see there is quite a lot left. Um, what I will do, I have got a comparison that I've done to see if I could see why it was abrasive. I've got um, Eri1 Marble filament and the Eri1 Glow in the Dark filament. Now, I've put these two side by side under a, a very cheap microscope that I own to see if I can get an image. Now, when you look at the two of them side by side, um, if you run your fingers along the uh, glow-in-the-dark filament, you can feel um, a texture to it. Now, if we look at the image, it looks like there are ridges um, along the edges of the, well, along the actual filament itself for the glow-in-the-dark, and I'm assuming that's what I'm feeling when you run your fingers along the filament itself. Whereas the PLA marble one, that is silky smooth to the touch. Now, I'm assuming these ridges are, um, along with the, the flex, are what causes the brass nozzles to burn out. Now, as I've said, I've printed out a few models, so I'll give you a quick look at the models that I have printed. They've all been done at 0.2 millimeter layer height, and I will link all the um, links to these files down below because none of these are my files at all. So we'll have a closer look at the models that I've printed. As I said, we have two identical glow-in-the-dark ghosts that are hollow underneath. These have been printed, again, at 0.2 millimeters, as I said. I've got a very small, and then its larger cousin, um, crystal rock formation. Again, obviously there's not a great detail to pick out because these are obviously all in white at the moment because it's um, not glowing yet. I've printed out a glasses holder for my lovely darling wife. So when she's on a PC, she's got somewhere to put her glasses. I'll just put that there. And then last but not least, I printed a fidget toy. And this is absolutely awesome. It does take a um, little bit of working to get the mechanism going smooth but that is all printed in glow-in-the-dark filament and I think this is about 10% uh, infill and again a 0.2 layer height. So what I'll do is I will kill the lights and we'll have a look at this lot actually glowing and seeing its true colours. So there we are, there are the objects glowing nice and bright and green in the dark. And I say we've got the two ghosts. This is the glow-in-the-dark fidget toy that I printed. As I said, this is the very, very small um, geode crystal thing. There's the large crystal. And then at the back here is the um, glasses case. Now, as you can see on the camera there, you can see it's actually starting to fade a little bit, the glow-in-the-dark. Um, the other cool thing is if you are printing with this in the dark, the filament itself, which isn't glowing as bright, and the best way to charge it, if you have a black light, hit it up quickly with a black light, you ready for this? There you go. <laughs> it's awesome stuff. So if we quickly hit these up, recharge them again, and they will glow quite bright for a few seconds and then dim to their normal brightness. There we go. And that's the colour it goes. You can get other colours, there is blue, um, but I've gone for the green glow in the dark. So that was a quick look at the models I've printed, and I must admit the glow-in-the-dark filament is absolutely awesome. I suppose put into um, features like eyes and things of models, it would look stunning. As a full model itself, um, yeah, they're kind of cool, but these are literally just knickknacks. This, I must admit, when I'm at work um, and I'm waiting for stuff or I'm on conference calls, I tend to fiddle with this one quite a lot. It's, it's just nice and tactile. And like I said, all these files are down below in the description, so if you really want to check them out, please do so. Um, so back on with this, how did it do to the nozzle? Well, this is the nozzle that I was printing with, and on this camera you won't be able to see, but over here, 
is a close-up again with a microscope of this nozzle versus a brand new 0.4mm nozzle. As you can see the side-by-side -side comparison there is a visible difference between the width of the exit on this one and the width of the exit on the brand new one. Now by my rough calculations using Photoshop zooming in and applying a grid um, I estimate this has increased by 0.1mm um, in diameter across thereabouts making this now a 0.5 maybe even a 0.6mm nozzle. Um, have I noticed any degradation in the quality of the prints? Honestly not a great deal. Um, this was the last object I printed, it's a fairly chunky one. Um, we'll take a closer look. So there we can see the model. Um, possibly not going to be able to pick up the details very very well on this camera. Um, I'll do my best to see what we can get for you but overall the actual layer lines aren't too bad on this. The details have come out fairly well. Um, it's clean, it's crisp. There's a couple of little wisps of stringing on it um, but overall no blobs, no snots, no nothing. The only thing I did notice was just about here there is a very very mild black line. Um, there's another one down on the base here as well. I can just assume that is burnt filament. Other than that everything else turns out fairly well. Would I continue using the nozzle for quality prints etc? Probably not. Um, even the overhang on the nose itself that printed fairly well with the, uh, the filament. So overall the quality isn't too bad but I dare say if I continue to use this nozzle with this filament and burn it out further you would start to see a degradation in the quality of your prints. So I have actually swapped to a brand new 0.4mm nozzle on here. Um, this one will get shoved to one side. I have got some um, stainless steel ones on order, um, sorry hardened, hardened steel ones on order. Um, they'll be arriving shortly and I'll use those going forward to print glow in the dark filament. So there you go, that's a quick look at the glow in the dark filament that I've been using. Um, in honesty, going forward, I would recommend using a hardened steel nozzle. If you've got plenty of brass ones to spare and you can afford to chuck them away, um, by all means continue using brass nozzles. But if it's something you're going to continue printing with this for a very long time with, then I would recommend using a hardened steel. So do me a favour, if you enjoyed the video or found it useful or entertaining, please smack the thumbs up or the thumbs down button. So if you can subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, helps me out immensely. And if you've got any comments, please drop them below and I'll do my best to answer any questions you might have. Until next time, happy printing.